Well, a decade and a half later, he's emerged as a top name on the comedy circuit, now known as John Shuttleworth. Tonight, he plays his hometown. You can catch him at the Lead Mill in Sheffield from 8 o'clock. I was made redundant a couple of years ago, and since then, I've spent my days at home on my organ, working on my songs, honing them down, working on chord structures. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, I'll work on that later. But uh, some nice sounds in here. Listen to this. Gorgeous, that, isn't it? 98 musical saw, which seems to work with anything. And that's ironic, because next door, 97. Rubbish, isn't it? Can't do anything with that. And there'll be more on John Shuttleworth and his amazing organ on calendar tomorrow night. We'll bring you the results of our Sunday competition tomorrow night. Cabaret circuit. It was a nostalgic date for John, who was born in Sheffield, although he was known as Graham Fellows at the time. Since then, he's had a short career as a pop star, jilted John, and has now emerged as a successful alternative comedian, winning a top award at the Edinburgh Festival last year. So Alan went down the lead mill to take a peek. Graham Fellows first came to attention in 1978 under the guise of Jilted John, scoring a hit record with his tale of disappointed love. Now, footage of his 70s incarnation is somewhat rare, but we've tracked down this clip when he posed with his girlfriend for calendar over a quiet fish and chip supper. Fifteen years on, he's now become John Shuttleworth, redundant security guard. Hello. John Shuttleworth here, uh, versatile singer-songwriter from Sheffield, South Yorkshire. I'm married to Mary, who's a, a dinner lady at a local primary school. We've got two teenage children, Darren and Karen. I must just stress that I don't tend to play venues like this, uh, rock venues with crack mirrors, you know, it's uh, not my style. I tend to do uh, sheltered accommodation, uh, isolation units, uh, civic walkabouts, that sort of thing. And among other venues he plays well, are regular TV name. dates with Jonathan Wass. Anyway, the man we're about to meet has a wealth of experience and he's happy to share it with us. <laughs> he's an all-round singer, songwriter, a consummate performer. He really is. Please welcome Mr. John Shuttleworth. <laughs> His act now centres around his beloved Yamaha organ and the range of sounds he can coax out of it. I'll work on that later. But uh, some nice sounds in here. Listen to this. Gorgeous, that, isn't it? 98 musical saw, which seems to work with anything. And that's ironic, because next door, 97. Rubbish, isn't it? Can't do anything with that. He also has invaluable tips on microphone technique for fellow artists. So, one, two, oh, that's too close, isn't it? You can damage the equipment. I think he's allowed, I'd be, he's had me in stitches, I'd be creased on the floor in tears, me. He's dead for me. That's too far away, isn't it? This, because uh, the late Freddie Mercury from Queen, he was too far away. You know, on uh, Bohemian Rhapsody on the video. It's miles away, you must have seen it. <laughs> All right, yeah, quite a large mouth, but even so, yeah. I don't know, I think it's a bit like Tommy Cooper, he just comes out, you just laugh at him straight away. Uh, Johnny Rotten. Now, I like a lot of Johnny's work, but he has it too low, doesn't he? It's down like that. You know, which is crazy, because your vocal cords are all compressed. You can't be gentle. It makes him <laughs> because he's so bad. Right. <laughs> Whitney Houston does that, you get the click of your ring. But always put it back in the mic stand, ready for the next person. <laughs> just, I think it's just his face. It's his face that does it. Uh, so, uh, of course, a classically trained vocalist, oh, like Sir Harry Seekin, doesn't need a microphone, does he? Just uses the natural reverb of the church grounds. Right. <laughs> let's, let's, and the one thing he what shares with you to John is let's writing a, songs of a rather um, bizarre um, nature. This is a song which traces the death of my first wife, Margaret, in 1970. It's up to mature person. My wife died in 1970, peacefully in her sleep. Though she's just a distant memory, occasional tears I weep.